Listen, I've had some terrible introductions over the years. The worst was uh, when someone said, this is the funniest man you will ever hear in your life. And I spoke and nobody ever laughed once. <laughs> or this man is so spiritual, you will be deeply moved. Nobody was moved, you know. Never oversell a, a speaker or a preacher, or it's just terrible. And uh, what I want to say about our speaker this morning is we've saved the best wine for the last. That's biblical, right? I say that because some months ago, this man was a pulpit guest of Dr. Schuler. He's an evangelist from Orlando, Florida, David Ring, and I have seldom been as moved by God to hear someone preach as David Ring. So he has a busy schedule. We called him way back and said, could you be here to close our institute? He had one morning free. That's this morning. So will you welcome God's man, your friend, David Ring. Welcome, David. Yeah, joy for me to be able to come this morning to speak to you. I'm so thankful that I can be a part of this weekend, and I thank God for you. Now, some of you look me over. You look me up one side and down the other. That's okay. I've been looking you over, too. You'd say, well, I don't think I'm going to like you. Well, you don't have any option. Because the Lord Jesus said to love one another. Amen? Amen. And therefore, you got to love me whether you want to or not. <laughs> and I got to love you whether I want to or not. And by looking at some of you, it's going to be very difficult. <laughs> But we're going to have a good time loving on each other. Amen? Amen? And I thank God for what God's going to do. Something is about to happen in you that you may not understand what's going on. But I guarantee you, if you are sensitive, to what God's speaking to you about. I guarantee you, you will leave and never be the same. And that's my prayer. Wherever will I go, that the people will leave and never be the same. You got your Bible this morning. Let's look at Second Corinthians. Chapter 12, verse 9. Second Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is my perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, we are with the glory in my infirmity that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in the way I am, because when I am weak, then I am strong. Therefore, I take pleasure in the way I am, because when I am weak, then I am strong. My message to you this morning is that God's grace is sufficient for you and me. Let me add you something this morning. Why do bad things? happen to God's people. Why do bad things happen to God's people? My life began in 1953. Jones Poor Arkansas, born with cerebral palsy. If you don't know what that is, when I was born, 
the odds in jungle the kind of my brain and therefore I was born dead for 18 minutes. That's why I walk with a limp, that's why I talk like I do because of cerebral palsy at birth. Why do bad things? happened to God's people. I was brought up in the church. My dad was a preacher, and therefore I'm a preacher kid. And when you're a preacher kid, you go to church all your life. I don't mean Sunday morning only. I mean every time the door open, good old preacher kid go to church. I, I tell people everywhere I go, I, I went to church so much. I, I went to church nine months before I was ever born. <laughs> and but when you go to church nine months before you ever born, you've been to church. Amen? Oh, oh my. But I thank God for giving me a mom and a dad who took me to church and not sent me to church. When I was 11 years old, my, my daddy got sick. November 1964, my daddy went to be with the Lord because of cancer of the liver. Why do bad things happen to God's people? Well, I'm the baby of the family. I, I'm the baby of eight. And when I came along, they spoiled me what? And I, I'm nothing but a spoiled what and what? And I love every minute of it. <laughs> my mama spoiled me what? My mama gave me everything I wanted. And sometimes she even gave me things I don't want. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I love my mama. I'm not only the baby of the family, but I'm a, a number one mama baby boy. You can tell by looking at me, I'm a mama boy, because I got that mama baby face. <laughs> and you, you make fun of me, I'm going to punch your lights out. But I love my mama. Every morning, my mama and I get up, we put our arms around each other, and we tell each other we love each other. Nothing wrong with loving your mama. Amen? I think everybody needs a mama love, everybody needs a mama touch. And I'm not ashamed to tell you, I will be a, a number one mom and baby boy until the day I die. Why? Because I should sure do love my mama. They, they are something very special about what mom love and a mom touch. One day in my life, though, my mom got sick, the woman I love. She went in the hospital like the day before Monday day. 1968 to have an operation on her neck. Uh, a simple operation, no big deal. July though, two months later, the doctor came to my family and said, your mom will never come home again. She had cancer. She had six months at the moment to live. Uh, why do bad things happen to God's people? Why does bad news to come to God's people? It, it devastated me. I, I didn't want to believe that. I didn't want to believe that one day I'm going to wake up and and my precious mama gonna be gone. And I done the only thing I knew what to do. I, I got down on my knees every day, every night, and I say, God, please, don't take my mama. God, please, 
Don't take my mom and God, please. Don't take my mom and God. My mom is the only thing I have, God. Don't take my mama, please. But in October, 1968, God took my mama, and I saw my mama go from 185 pounds to 57 pounds. And it tore me up. I didn't want to live. I wanted to die. Why do bad things happen to God's people? I, I told my family, give up on me. They gave up. They, they gave me everything they could, but they couldn't give me the love, and they couldn't give me the joy, and, and they couldn't give me the touch that only a mom could give. Everywhere I went, somebody would point their finger and say, Look, that boy walked funny, look, that boy talked funny, look, that boy can't do nothing right. It, it's no fun to be my fun. And I couldn't go on home to my mama, and I couldn't say, Mama, somebody made fun of me today. She couldn't pour her arm around me and make it all better. People look at me. I, I, would, lay, I would lay in bed every night with tears rolling down my face, begging to die. Why? Because I was lonely. Why? Because I was longing to be in my mama's arms one more time. I thought if I could be in my mama's arms one more time, the pain would go away. Oh, not the pain that go with the body, but the pain that much deeper than the body. I told my family, I will never be in them thing. I will never do anything. Everybody gave up on me. But one sister, she encouraged me. She wanted me to go to school. I didn't want to go to school, but I didn't want to be my friend of anymore. It's no fun to walk down the hallway and let somebody laugh at my body because I'm walking with a limb. I could not help the way I was. People, you never know what it is to go down to a bus stop and, and trying to be friendly. You open your mouth trying to make friends and, and somebody always point their finger in your face and call you retarded and every other name that go with that. My sister wanted me to go to church. I didn't want to go to church either. I, I've been to church all my life. I, I'm the preacher kid. I, my dad is the preacher. I know the lingo. I even know John 3, 16. So do you. But John 3, 16 don't make any sense. Oh, I know. For God so loved the world that he gave a only begotten son. That, that, that's one thing, buddy, but, but it's another thing to wake up and every morning with tears rolling down your face and say, God, do you love me? Let's forget about the war, but what about David? Eh? God, if you love me, why do you take away my daddy? If you love me, God, why do you take away my mama? God, if you love me, why do you give me a crib body? God, if you love me, why are you picking on me? God, if you love me, why? Why are you so angry with me? God, if you love me, why do bad things happen to your people? God, if you love me, why are you breaking my heart every time I turn around? People, I don't know you today. I do not know you, but I know more than for sure. 
wants of you, he'll not all of you have asked the same question, have you? God, if you love me, why, why, why? We all been there, folks. But one night I went to church just to get my sister on my back. She'd be on it long enough, and at times she'd climb off. <laughs> and that night I went in, I'd sit down, and the preacher go up to preach, and I'd say, Man, I, I wish you would shut up. You've been there too, huh? And that night the preacher shut up, okay, but, but the Lord Jesus spoke up. And the Lord came to me and a knock at my heart, at my lonely heart, at my empty heart. And he said, David, I'm standing at your heart knocking. And if you only listen to me and open the door, I will come in. And I will have fellowship with you forever and forever. And that night I got up on my seat, came down to a old fashioned altar, got down on my knees, and I said, Lord Jesus, if you will live up the way, if you will really love me, come into my life. I, I'm a lonely crippled boy. I, I'm a nobody, but today I want to be a somebody. And I hallelujah, people. April 17th, 1970, I became a somebody because Jesus came into my life. I became a brand new creature because Jesus came into my life. God took away my old thing and gave me a new thing. God took away my loneliness, gave me a happiness. I, I'm not lonely anymore. I'm happy. You know why? Because I've been to the doctor. Dr. Jesus. For the good doctor to go to, amen? Number one, you don't have to wait in a lobby for two hours. <laughs> God took away my sorrow and, and gave me joy unspeakable and full of glory. Look at me, people, look at me, people. I'd still walk with a limb, I'd still talk funny, but oh, the joy that floods my soul because Jesus touched me and made me whole. I'm not the same anymore. People come up to me and say, Brother Dave, don't you want to be normal? And I look at them, I'd say, what's normal? You think you're normal? <laughs> you got a long way to go, buddy. <laughs> Some of you not going to make it. Amen. <laughs> I don't want to be normal. I want to be judged like God made me. Amen? Look at me. Let, let me tell you something that below your mentality down the tube that God knew me before I was even born. And when I was in my mama's womb, God ordained me. The Bible said I was wonderfully and fearfully made by God. And I don't know about you, but my God don't mind getting junk. Amen? Now, by looking at some of you, he came real close. <laughs> you welcome. <laughs> I thank God for the way I am. What's wrong? with the heaven's cerebral palsy. 
Det er det, vi er handicap. En snart der er handicap, en er privilege to talk funny. You say to me, it's a minority. I beg you, ever loving pardon. Because the Bible said, if God be for me, who can be against me? Amen. You say to me, it's a disability, baloney. I will be like I am in a day. They are a healthy man that don't know the power of God. I would be like I am in a day. They are a healthy woman that never seen the glory of God all her life. I would be like I am in a day. I would talk funny in a day that never the, the a healthy person that never experienced the grace of God. I don't have a daddy. I don't have a mama. I don't even have a healthy body. But the, uh, let me tell you what I do have. I have the grace of all men in God. And the Bible said God's grace. It's sufficient. I've been told I'm a cripple. I'm a cripple. I'm a cripple. But the Bible tells me I'm more than conqueror. Amen. They tell me I'm a nobody. But the good book tells me I'm a somebody. I've been bought with a pride. I'm a child of the king. They tell me I... I can't do anything, but the Bible said, with God all things are possible. They tell me I will never be a preacher, but I am. <laughs> no. In 1971, God called me to preach. I was laying in bed when I minded my own business. <laughs> You've been there too, huh? <laughs> and God said, David, I want you to preach. I'd say, oh, me? Lord, I can preach. Lord, I talk from the Lord. People can understand me. Come on now, Lord. I have to weep a party, or are you sure you want me to preach? Take a second look and think on me. He took that second look, and I, hallelujah, he still called me to preach. And I got out of my bed, got my Bible, then he opened the Philippians 4, 13, which said, I can do all things to quiet which strength me and but they look at me, I'm not gonna let that sweep apart the body slow me down from bragging on Jesus. I how sweep apart see. What's your problem? Mmm. <laughs> Why are you crying the blues? Why are you down in the dump? Why, why are you down in the mouth? What are you doing for the kingdom of God today, healthy people? Look at you, look at you. God gave you a healthy body, but what are you doing with it for the kingdom of God? People look at me, don't whine, but shine for Jesus. Life is too short, eternity is too long to cry the blue. Don't you think it's about time to get the lead out and put the Lord in? Amen. 
Don't you think it's about time to get off dead sender? Don't you think it's about time to quit playing church? Look at you. God gave you a healthy body. Look at mine. My body not healthy. My body frail. I can't even say Jesus plain. What's your problem? A healthy man. What's your problem? A healthy woman. What are you doing for the kingdom of God today? They told me I will never make it in evangelism. 1973, God called me in the full-time evangelism. And, and I was so excited. But preachers discouraged me. They, they pop my balloon. They'd say, well, that's fine and dandy, but you won't ever make it. Why not? No, nobody will invite you to speak in their church. You won't ever make it. Nobody, you, you will not get enough invitation to shake a stick at. But I only spoke 243 days in 1990. In 1990 alone, I would save over 325 invitations. When I get a little more invitation, I, I'm going to go full time. God don't want my ability, but God want my availability. Amen. I can't even say Jesus. Plain. What's your problem? A healthy people? I won nationwide television last year when, uh, nine times. And, and, I wanted to get up before the people on TV and I wanted to say to the bunch of preachers who told me I will never make it, I wanted to say, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> when men said, no way! God said, stand back, boys. Let me take over. It's not by power, not by my but by my spirit, saith the Lord. They told me I would never finish college, but I did. I acquired four years of college in the five. You've been there too, huh? <laughs> my own family, my own family said, David, you won't, you won't find a wife. Don't even look for a wife. Why not? No woman will love you. Why not? You cripple. Don't even look for a wife because you are not good enough to love. My, my own family told me that. 
You can't make a living for a wife. Don't even look for a wife. But 1981, God and me showed them a thing or two. I found me a dynamite wife who loved me, who prayed for me, who stick with me through thick and thin. She's not my slave, but she is God's precious gift. And I thank God every day for my little healthy wife. They told me I would never be a daddy, but I am. Not once, but four times. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? <laughs> I'm a daddy to three little girls, one little boy, April Jane, eight, Ashley Dawn, five, Nathan David, my little boy, Two and my little Amy Joy is 20 months old. But uh, not 20 months, 10 months. <laughs> uh, people come up to me and say, Brother Dave, are your children normal? Uh, Sometimes I I think they got brain damage. <laughs> but that's normal, amen. <laughs> You've been there too, huh? <laughs> but look at me, I, if you don't believe in the power of God, look at Bill. Because I'm a, I'm a living proof what God can do to a life. Every time I look at my family, all I can say to God be the glory. Great thing he hath done. But God, I know where I've been. I'm that little boy who, who lords his mama. I'm the little boy that lords his dad. I, I'm the little boy that they gave up on. I know where I've been, but thank God I know where I am. And buddy, I came a long way, baby. And I thank God for the way I am. I know where I am. I, I know where I've been. I know where I am. And I know where I'm going. And one day I'm going to look up and I'm going to see my mama and my daddy again, won't that be neat? Amen. You'd say, Brother Dave, do you mean your mom? Do you mean your dad? Sure I do. I would love to go home Thanksgiving and eat mom and go home cooking. I, I would love to go home at Christmas time and find a present for mom and dad under the tree. I would love to, to, to call my mama up and say a happy mom and dad. I would love to call my mama up and say, I sure do love you today, mom. I would love to bring my daddy, to let my daddy hear me preach, and after I preach, let my daddy tell me everything I do wrong. I would love that, but I can't ever help that. But don't feel sorry for me, because one day it's going to be a hallelujah homecoming day. And not only that, when I get to heaven. I'm going to hire me a brand new body. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to walk with a limp anymore. I'm not going to talk funny anymore. I'm going to walk and talk like Jesus. But until then, until then, I'm going to Keep on bragging on Jesus.
there is a song I like to sing at the end of my life story. I love to sing this song because it sums up what I've been trying to share with you now. I, I'm not a singer, I'm a preacher. God did not come in to sing, God come in to preach. And after I sing, you're going to say amen. <laughs> Stick to preach, boy. But I love to sing this song because it's not coming from my lips. It's coming from way down in my heart. Now, Brother Fred, make me look good. You'd say, what key do you want in? I don't care, pick one. <laughs> because by the time we get finished, I'll be all over the keyboard. But people look at me. Let the song bless you today. Let the song minister to you today. Because you are looking at a 37 year old man who adds victory in Jesus. I I heard about old story how a saver came from glory how he gave his life on Calvary to save a witch like we I heard about his groan all the precious blood me. Then I repented all my sins and won the victory. Amen. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me, then bought me with its redeeming blood. He loved me, and I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I like that second verse. I heard about his healing of the cleansing power we believe how we made the lame to walk again and cause the blind to see and then I cried, Lord Jesus, come in my broken spirit. And you know what, people, somehow Jesus came to me and brought to me the song of victory. Sing you with me. Oh, victory in Jesus. My Savior forever louder He sought me and fought me With His sweet deep love He loved me
sing it again. Over here in Jesus, my Savior, forever. He saw me, then followed me with his redeeming blood. He would look at me. You can leave today with victory in Jesus. We throw away broken things. We throw away broken things. If we walk funny, throw away. If we talk funny, throw away. We throw away broken things. But thank God, God don't throw away broken things. God uses broken things. I have this wee policy. Watch your problem. What your problem? What your problem? Thank you.
one of these days I'll probably read you a magazine. By the way, David, one of these days I'll watch you running marathons on Universal Television. By the way, one of these days it ain't gonna be just like it is now. But till that time, till that day, we got to know that. 